Hola, hoy estamos con Alexandra Bracken en Buenos Aires, quien viene a la Feria del Libro Internacional de Buenos Aires 2019 a presentar sus libros Pasajera y The Darkest Legacy, publicados en español por RBA. Welcome to Argentina. Is it your first visit? It is. It's my very first visit and I've loved the city so far. And the whole country. Everyone's been so welcoming and friendly. Have you met fans yet? Not yet. So that I feel like it'll start on Wednesday, I think. The first is when I get to finally meet everybody. But I've been getting a lot of messages from everyone with recommendations of what to do. And um, they've been very helpful with, you know, with planning out an itinerary for us. My sister and I came a couple days early, so we were able to do some sightseeing. And they were, all the fans were very, very helpful. And which was your favorite place? Oh, this sounds so grim, but I really did like walking through um, the Recoleta Cemetery. I thought it was so, int it was just so interesting, and we don't really have anything like that in the United States that I know of. So it was, it was beautiful, but also grim. <laughs> I don't know. It was really, and that whole the whole neighborhood around it is really. Cool. It's wonderful. I know. Oh, we got here your new book, yes. Passenger. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Sure. So I call this sort of like a mixture of, um, it's like a, I don't know how to put this. It's like Outlander meets National Treasure. Are you familiar with that movie? So it's sort of like a treasure hunt that spans centuries and continents, but it's also primarily a romance. It's a love story. So if you're into that sort of thing, you might be into that. But there's a lot of history in it. And we were talking about that earlier, that I had majored in history in college, history and English. And it was fun to finally use all my like historical facts, <laughs> finally use my major. And which was your favorite character? Oh, you know, I really, I love, there are two point of view characters. There's Nicholas, who's an 18th century young man who is a former slave um, and now is working as a privateer, which is sort of like a licensed pirate, if you want to say. It's not like a full-on pirate, but um, he's wonderful. I love him, and I loved writing in his voice, but I really, um, I just loved Etta, who's the main heroine of the book, and I loved how she was so ambitious with her playing the violin, and I just, you know, she, the two of them together, though, that's, those are always my favorite scenes. Yeah. Oh, you've also got another new book. <laughs> <laughs> the Darkest Legacy. Here you got the first book, The Darkest Minds. Yep. And before talking about the, your new book, I would like you to, to tell me a little about the process of making the movie from The Darkest Minds. Yeah, so one of the things that you have to accept when you sell the film rights to a book is that you might not have any sort of control or get any sort of input. There are certain ways that you can make sure that does happen eventually, but for the most part I really actually didn't have that much to do with the movie. It was, you know, they took the movie and, or they took the book and they figured out what aspects of it that they liked and that resonated with them and they ran with it. So I always say my number one job or my role was being number one cheerleader. I noticed that the biggest change was the one that um, Chubbs had with the colour. Yeah. Are you, I mean, do you like that change? I, that was one of the changes that I, so I did try to push back against a couple things that I felt, you know, didn't feel necess necessary, like the changes felt like they were might have been changing something to change it. The director, Jennifer Nelson, explained that change to me as them wanting to have um, each of the colors represented in the van, and I was like, well, that, that does make sense, but also I was like, everyone's going to be so mad. <laughs> so I knew it would... Um, it would cause some irritation with the readers. I think on a whole it ended up being okay, but my push, uh, the reason I was like, I'm not sure you should make this change is because I didn't like that 
Chubbs' character, his intelligence was just like who he was as a person and that when they changed it so that he was green it felt like it was because of his power versus who he was. But you can also argue that their powers are sort of, you know, they're manifestations of who they are to begin with. So, I don't know, I, it was, was one of those changes where they, I think, wanted to make their mark on this story, so. I know wrote the darkest, the darkest Legacy was published like years after the trilogy. Why did you decide to publish this last novel? So it was a number of reasons and I had always wanted to come back to the Darkest Minds universe after I had finished it and I just wanted to wait for the right story and I had a couple of false starts where I thought you know this is definitely the continuation or I tried picking up the story again from Ruby's point of view and it didn't feel right and so it took me a really long time to find the right story to find the right narrator which happens to be Zoo and I was like I really like the idea of giving readers a familiar world with the familiar cast of characters but giving them something new and setting it in the future and seeing what's happened to everybody and having a little bit of mystery associated with that. So it was really, it was so fun to come back to that world and to write from a different character's point of view. And it just so happened that the timing lined up with the movie and I thought, you know, releasing it around the movie's release would give the book the best chance of getting promoted and give it the attention I wanted it to have. So. And are you planning to write another book in the series or have you written one? I have I have not written one yet. I'm I think I will. Like I can't resist coming back to those characters, but it's one of those things where I don't want to continue a book just or a series just to continue it. It has to be like a something that feels different, something that feels emotional and something that readers I know readers will enjoy versus me just giving them more and more and more. So it, I'm waiting for the right story again. Hopefully this time it won't take years. <laughs> What do you feel when you see all your books translated into languages that you don't know? It's really remarkable and I often have to rely on the readers to tell me how the translation is or when it's coming out. Um, but it really, it, it absolutely blows my mind. I had always, you know, growing up I had always hoped to be a writer one day and I don't even think I knew that books got translated into other languages until I, you know, I was a teenager but like when I was a kid it was just like I just want to write books that's all I want to do when I'm an adult like when I grow up I'm gonna write books for kids and then to be able to first of all do that and to achieve that dream but then also to just have the work go out into the world the wider world outside of the United States has been indescribable it's really amazing well, we talked about a lot of your books. I want to know now, like to give this interview an end, which are your future projects? Ooh, okay, so I do have a YA that I'm working on right now. It's I'll give you a couple little details, but it's still, um, I turn in a first draft, so I still have some editing to do. But it is a standalone, it's not a series. It's set in modern day New York. It's what we would call more of an urban fantasy versus, you know, historical fantasy or dystopian. Um, and it involves Greek mythology. The gods might make an appearance. There might be a lot of fighting. It's a little Hunger Gamesy. So that I think the earliest you'll see it is probably late 2020. So it'll still be a while. And then there's also my middle grade series, The Dreadful Tale of Prosper Reading, which I think has been translated and might be coming to Argentina. Or is in Argentina, perhaps? Not yet. Not yet soon hopefully actually I think the first book is but there is a second book that should be coming out pretty soon so well thank you very much I'm really glad for having you here thank you for having me thank you so much it was so fun chatting with you estuvimos hablando con Alexandra Bracken la escritora de la serie de mentes poderosas y pasajeras